Yes, I'm so glad you are here. Uh, you were looking for a tutorial, weren't you? A Godot 4.3, an up tutorial for the Limbo AI state machine. You just happened to click on the right video. I'm so glad you're here. You might have seen my previous video about the state machine, but that video was way more of a showcase video, me trying to convince you why you should learn the state machine. Um, this time around, we are actually learning the state machine. This is a tutorial, a beginner's friendly tutorial for you to learn the state machine, the Limbo AI state machine in Godot 4.3. Hi, Charlie from the future here. Um, I just edited the video, it was over an hour long, so I decided to split them up in two parts. This video that you are watching right now is more like a preparation kind of video. We are creating a Godot project, we are installing Limbo AI, we are creating a floor with a texture applied to it, and also a character body 3D with a sprite and some basic movement. But that's about it. If you already know that kind of stuff, you can skip this video altogether. Just go straight to the end of this video and right over there, I will add the actual state machine tutorial. And one more thing, uh, while I was editing this video, it really bugged me how I'm saying uh, variable instead of variable constantly. And I just refused to re-record the whole video. Are you crazy? All right, let's get to it. If you are not completely sure what a state machine is, uh, you should watch the other video. I will, I will link it somewhere over here. But the short summary would probably be that the state machine allows you to write code for all your states of your character. For example, jump, crouch, attack in a very efficient way. It's uh, an efficient and organized way to go about that code to keep it maintainable, to keep it organized and also scalable. But if you want to learn about all the details, watch the other video. Uh, without further ado, let's get straight into the tutorial. I guess you already know how to start a project. If not, go and watch this video. It's also on my channel, but we create a project by simply pressing create. We give it the name, something like state machine. Uh, make sure to select the right um, folder and voila, let's create a project, an empty project. The next thing that you wanna do is to install the Limbo AI add-on because that's the state machine that I'm currently using. Uh, ever since I started working on my game, um, by the way, there are many devlogs on my channel, make sure to check those out too. Um, I, I tried different state machines. I built one my own, then I built one based on a tutorial video of somebody else. And eventually I ended up with Limbo AI, which I really like. So go to the assets lip button right over here and click on the search bar and search for Limbo. There you will find, I think, two instances. Uh, pick the one with the right version number. In my case, that's 4.3. Click on it, uh, click download. Uh, last but not least, click on install. And there will be a bunch of errors. If I'm, yeah, remember correctly, you can just ignore those. Um, there's not, nothing's breaking. <laughs> I'm not sure why those errors are there. Just click OK and you installed the add-on. And when my big head is not in the way, you can tell that the uh, add-on is installed because now there's a new folder called add-ons and also demo. All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is to create a scene for the main world, the main scene to play around with this prototype. We do that by making a folder called scenes in the root, right mouse button on the root, and you call it scenes. And to keep this tutorial simple, we're just gonna create a main scene directly in this folder. We call it main. It's a 3D scene. You could also add a 2D scene if you want, but I just happened to pick 3D so I can help as many people as possible because I think it's easier to go back to 2D when you also learn 3D than the other way around. You click on okay. We are really going to keep it simple in this tutorial, so just add a simple floor, a single object. We do that by add child node, search for static body 3D. The static body 3D needs a mesh and also collision, so first let's add the mesh. Press right mouse on the static body 3D, click add node and search for mesh instance 3D. And then we are going to add a simple cube. Let's go for new box mesh. And by clicking on the box right over here, you can set the dimensions. Let's go for 50, 1, 10. The floor still needs a collision, so click on the static body 3D yet again, press add child node and search for collision shape 3D and press create. We're gonna add the same shape to the collision, so we click on box shape. You click on the icon right over here, and this one is also getting the dimensions of 51, 
and 10. One thing that we're going to do is to add a texture to the floor. Otherwise, you cannot really tell whenever you're moving. So I put a link in the description of this video to download a little texture for you, a dirt texture. So click on the link in the description of this video and you will see this texture. You can also use your own textures, but this one has been made by Fabu Guy. Just press right mouse click, save image as, and make sure to save it in your project. So let's just make a folder real quick, call it assets in the root of your project. Create another folder in it called textures. And to keep it somewhat simple, we're just gonna add a uh, folder called world. You probably have to log in for the high res version, but for the sake of this video, you can also just press save image as, and then put it in the folder you just created. And I'm going to call it dirt texture. I don't think it's actually dirt. I think I just did the ground dirty. You get that? Smart jokes here on the Chap C channel. Gosh, I'm so cringe. <laughs> Since this tutorial doesn't have to look pretty, we are just going to add this texture uh, very quick and dirty. So, so, <laughs> by clicking the mesh instance 3D, make this a little bit bigger, and we search for the uh, surface material override one, right over here. Click on empty, select new standard material 3D, click on the little thumbnail right over here, search for albedo and then we're just going to drag and drop the texture to the texture property right over here as you can see it looks a bit muddy uh, it's so hard not to be cringe but you can solve that by going to uv1 right over here and click on the tri planar checkbox you can mess around with it a bit to make it a bit more pretty okay this is perfectly fine so we've got ourselves a floor with a collision and now we can start with the actual tutorial. Let's start with creating the player scene, the player character. We do this by going to scenes yet again. How I personally go about it is to create a folder called agents because that's how we call uh, any character that uses a behavior tree or a state machine. So I just make a folder called agents and then another folder called player that lives in the agents folder and within the player um, folder, we create a scene and you can simply call it player. Make sure it's a 3D scene, but we can also make it extend the character body 3D object right over here. Click on OK. Let's add a sprite to the player scene by clicking on the root and click on add child node. Search for sprite. Oh. Typing is hard. Search for Sprite 3D, this one right over here, double click. And then we are going to download the character Sprite pack first. Uh, this link is also in the description of my video. And it's this character pack. Uh, this one has been made by Dreamair. It's a very pretty character pack. I personally like the outline version. And for the sake of this video, I picked the Warrior Man sheet. It's this PNG. Let's put the texture in the assets folder as well. So open up the assets folder, open up the textures folder, create a new folder called agents. And within this folder, you can copy and paste the sprite that you just downloaded. You could also rename it to player, for example. And there you go. You got yourself your sprite sheet in the assets, texture and agents folder of your project. And when you go back to Godot, it will be automatically imported right over here. And now you can go to Sprite 3D and drag and drop yet again the player PNG to the texture. As you can see, you can see the whole multiverse of all your characters at the same time. We don't want that. Uh, we want to show just one frame of the sprite. You can do that by clicking on the texture right over here. Go to animation. And here you need to set the horizontal and vertical frames. And I think you have to count them manually. Uh, you are lucky though, because I already did that. So you can just put 16 right over here. It's like the amount of sprites that live on the horizontal line right over here. Uh, now you have to also put the vertical frames in there and that's 25 if I remember correctly. And now you've got yourself your character sprite. You can see that it's very blurry, it's muddy, it, it doesn't look good. And that has to do with some settings. And to avoid blurry sprites in Godot, you can go to the flags category right over here when you select the sprite 3D object. Scroll down a bit and go to the texture filter right over here and select nearest. And voila, it looks way prettier. And while we are here, also click on alpha cut here and click discard. 
I'm not completely sure what it does, but it makes it so that the, uh, the object also casts shadows and it looks way more pretty in the world environment. And while I'm no expert with image optimization, I also go to import, make sure to still have the PNG selected right over here, click on import, and again, my face is in the way, <laughs> but go to the compress to setting at the very bottom of the, uh, of the window and select disabled and then re-import. Uh, this makes it so that the image doesn't get compressed and all the pixels look uh, way more pretty. You can just click on the debug play button right over here to test out your game Clicking on select current. And then there's absolutely nothing to be seen. <laughs> That's because we don't have a camera and we don't have proper lighting. So let's fix that real quick. Close the debug window, go back to the player scene right over here. And then we're gonna add a camera in the root of the player scene. Click on add child node, search for camera 3D we're going to put this one a bit away from the character, also a bit to the top, and maybe we rotate it a bit. And when you click on the play button, you are suddenly a game developer. Amazing. Uh, it lo doesn't look too well. It's very dark. Uh, we can fix that by adding a world environment to the main scene. Go back to the main scene yet again. You see that the lighting is way better over here. And that's because the preview lighting is different from the in-game lighting. But we can easily apply the preview lighting to our game as well by clicking on the little dots right over here. And then simply add this button, add sun to scene, press the dots again and click on add environment to scene. There are now two additional nodes in your scene, one called world environment and the other one directional light 3D. These make it so that when you press on play, it somewhat looks similar to your preview environment. But nothing's working as you can see uh, because there's no code, there's no gravity applied to the character. So let's go and, uh, and fix that real quick. Go back to your player scene by clicking on the tab right over here. Let's add a collision to the character first. Do that by right mouse clicking on the root player node right over here. Click on add. Search for collision shape 3D, this one. Double click. Uh, make sure to select a shape right over here, shape. And I think the pill shape will do just fine. As you can see, the collision shape is way bigger than the character. Uh, let's change that. We're going to click on the Sprite 3D real quick, and we're gonna search for transform right over here. And we are going to make our character at least four times bigger. Oh, you know what? Let's make it five. I'm gonna reposition the Sprite just like that. So it's somewhat in the middle. Let me align the pill shape a bit. So it somewhat matches the, uh, the character. And since the character is way bigger now, I'm going to put the camera a bit further away. Yeah, it looks a bit big, but you know, you young people are probably looking uh, at this tutorial on your smartphones. So uh, let's just keep it as big as it is right now. The next thing that we're gonna do is to add a script to the player so it can actually move around the world. Do that by clicking on the root node player once again and click on the plus icon right over here. And now we are going to attach a script to the scene. And since we already picked the character body 3D earlier, it uh, makes it so that you can check this checkbox right over here. It will apply basic movement. Let's just go for that right now. We can always delete the default code. Before pressing create, let's select a better folder. By going to the root, add a new folder called scripts, add another folder called agents, add another folder called player, and then you can just save it as player.gd. And click on create. So Godot provided you with the basic code, and I think theoretically the game should already work. Yes, you got yourself a game. Upload it to Steam already. Amazing, this concludes the first part of the tutorial. We now created a world, a little platform, a character with a static sprite in it, and we are now finally ready to implement the state machine.